Hi everyone! April's chapel theme is the spiritual discipline of guidance. One of the best ways to practice the spiritual discipline is to seek guidance from others by asking questions and listening to their responses. The Holy Spirit uses relationships and people in our lives to speak to us. So we as a Christian Ministries team decided to get questions from you and then seek guidance from some of our teachers. And we hope that this helps you a little in this time of uncertainty. Uh, first, depression is a term used for a wide range of um, severity in that. And, and if it's severe, that's beyond my advice. Uh, two, two main things I would suggest I, would, I need to do better myself. Uh, routines. Uh, the more our life is in a routine, the more safe our brain feels, the more comfortable we will feel. Uh, so that could mean set an alarm and get up at the same time, uh, go to bed at the same time every day. Um, that's a big one. And uh, also exercise is a big deal. So um, routines and exercise. Choosing a specific time each day, so for me that's morning, and sticking with that every day until it becomes a habit. Um, and I choose the morning because I feel like when I spend that time with God in the morning and read my Bible and pray, that it sets my mind right for the day. Um, it changes my behavior, it changes um, how I speak, how I think about the day, my outlook. Um, and I think for me, that's the point of devotions is to build my relationship with God and change how I act. For me growing up, I don't think people talked about uh, doubt um, much, and I think that made it a lot harder when um, I was having doubts and wondering about things. I think it's really important for us to be open with the struggles that we have with each other. We're called to community, but our culture is very individualistic, and I think that's, that makes it kind of hard. But we need to talk to each other about the doubts that we've had and the struggles that we go through. My Spanish War students will recognize this book, Separated by the Border, by Jean Gina Thomas. At the end of her book, uh, she has this chapter, about 20 pages long, of her reflections and all that her family went through and her foster child went through and her foster child's biological mom went through. And she's pained. It was a very painful experience for her. And like all of us, um, she had to try to work through that pain. We all have something in our lives that is painful, something that we are struggling with, something that we are questioning, and something that does cause us to doubt sometimes, uh, doubt our faith, doubt God's presence. And so she writes this, lament is a biblical discipline that we often ignore. It's so true. Why do we ignore this idea of lamenting? The Bible has an entire book dedicated to lamentations. I think that God really invites us to lament. He invites us to question and to wonder. I think the key in dealing with doubt is bringing it before God, bringing it before people who you trust, who you can talk to, who you can talk through these things with. Uh, Gina Thomas is a proponent of writing out your lamentations, like a journal entry, um, and even doing it in an acrostic form where you literally take the alphabet, A through Z, and you give a term to each letter that represents something in that pain, in that doubt, in that confusion. And then she suggests that you pray over it. And so this is something that I have come to do. Now, I haven't done the acrostic lamentation, but I have put lamentations and questions in my, in my prayers. And uh, I think that's something that we all need to work through. So is it okay to doubt sometimes, to wonder, to question? Yeah, I think so. I think actually it's important to ask. If we never ask, we will never know. And I do believe that God will give us an answer. It might not be an answer that we're looking for. Um, and there are some things that we may still continue to be confused about. And that's okay. Because the truth is, 
we are not going to understand everything. And we might not even be happy with everything. But I believe if we are going to God, if we are writing down our doubts, our questions, our lamentations, it will help us work through that piece of our faith. And we will continue to grow as Christians and as a community. I'm no expert in this, but it is something that I have been thinking a lot about. So when we look at the world and horrible events, when we look at things like the pandemic and all that coronavirus has taken from us, if we look at the negative side of it, um, all of the pain and suffering that it has caused, I don't know. I don't, I don't have an answer for why it is happening. Is it because we live in a fallen world? Maybe, right? I highly doubt the uh, Garden of Eden had anything like this. But um, we do live in a fallen world in need of redemption. Uh, bad things are hap gonna happen, that's a given. I don't think it's a good question to say, why does God allow it? We know that creation is broken. We know that bad things are gonna happen. Bad things have always happened. Uh, it's the only thing any human being has ever known. I think we get caught up in the culture of um, happily ever after, thinking that everything is going to be um, perfect, and it's not. Instead of calling out, is there a God, because bad things happen, I think it's okay to call out, where are you, God, when bad things happen. We need to be searching for God in in our lives in we're, when we're in the, the desert times of our life when we're having hard things happen god is there um we don't get to know all the whys of things but bad things have always happen and they're going to continue to happen it's our job to bring god to people who really need him in those times I chose to answer that one. I kind of regret it now, but uh, here are some of, my, some of my thoughts on that. So one of the first things I thought of when I read the question was Job. If you recall, Job was a wealthy man. He had lots of flocks and herds, children, um, and it was all taken away from him. God took it all away from him and he suffered. And he had three friends who came to comfort him and they didn't do a very good job at that. Most of their time speaking was spent asking him what he had done to deserve the punishment, the suffering that he was going through. And Job makes his case that he is righteous, he's upright, he's done nothing wrong, but the friends keep insisting that the greater the suffering, the greater his sin must have been. And uh, God rebukes them all three of them. In Job 42, verse 7, uh, God is says, My anger burns against you, the friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right. And I think when you hear people suggest that the coronavirus is a punishment, especially when they are suggesting it's a punishment for a certain group of people's sins, that you should be very wary of that that we are not called as followers of Christ to spend our time um, figuring out the why and the who and the what about suffering and punishment. Rather, we're called to respond to it. We're, we're called to respond to people's suffering. We're called to bring comfort and hope. Um, I was also reading um, my Time magazine a couple of weeks ago, and I came across this short excerpt from N.T. Wright, who is a theologian. He's a bishop in the Anglican Church, and he writes this very short excerpt called Faith Not Explanations. The coronavirus-induced limitations on life have arrived at the same time as Lent, the season of doing without. But this Lent has no fixed Easter to look forward to, 
a fast without the promise of a feast. No doubt some will tell us why God is doing this. A punishment, a warning, perhaps the biblical tradition we really need to turn to is lament. Lament is what happens when people ask why and don't get an answer. And by the way, Job never really got an answer for his suffering either. It's where we get to when we move beyond our self-centered worry about our failings and look at the suffering of the world. In the Bible, God also laments. The spirit groans. Jesus weeps. God grieves for his world. It is no part of the Christian vocation to be able to explain what's happening and why. In fact, it is part of the Christian vocation not to be able to explain and to lament instead. As the Spirit laments within us, so we become small shrines where the presence and healing love of God can dwell. And out of that can emerge new possibilities, new acts of kindness, new scientific understanding, and new hope. So, of course, the uh, time that we have during the quarantine um, does limit maybe our opportunities for how we can help the hurting and the suffering. But it does give us time to think about you know, what God might be calling us to transform in our lives, to readjust our vision of and what we are dedicating our time and our efforts towards. That's something that I've been thinking about. Is COVID-19 a punishment from God? No. 